Hello, this is Error, catching the wave during the Korean New Year. DeepSeek R1 is causing a huge stir right now, and one of the most shocking aspects is that it's been released as open source. But since the results are already coming in, I felt I needed to share this news with you quickly. They are currently discussing the use of dynamic 1.5 8-bit quantization in the operation of DeepSeek R1. Despite being an open source project, it is important to note that DeepSeek R1, as previously mentioned, is constructed using the MOE architecture and boasts an extraordinarily large number of 671 billion parameters. In the MOE architecture, a segment of these vast parameters gets activated, allowing the model to specialize in tasks like mathematics or coding. Nevertheless, the model size remains substantial, requiring approximately 720 gigabytes of memory for efficient performance. So everyone, as AI engineers, many of you probably don't have devices like MacBooks or NVIDIA GPUs that come with 720 gigabytes of memory, right? At best, you might be linking several MacBook Pros or Mac Minis together to increase the memory capacity, but now with this dynamic 1.5 8-bit quantization technique, things are changing. By employing this technique, they successfully reduced the size to 131 gigabytes. Interestingly, these individuals are not part of the DeepSeek team. An AI research team known as Unsless has reportedly managed to shrink the size from 720 gigabytes down to 131 gigabytes, cutting it by almost 80% while still maintaining performance. This breakthrough is quite noteworthy. It's an example of open source leading to better innovations. The entire world is buzzing right now. And this is all due to the power of open source. Unlike major players like OpenAI or Google, which cannot release updates swiftly, this scenario exemplifies the incredible prowess of the open source community. In this context, dynamic 1.58 bit is mentioned, indicating that the term dynamic refers to the varying bit levels, where some bits are kept higher, while others are maintained at much lower levels. This is explored in the R1 architecture, where certain layers are quantized at higher bit resolutions. Quantization refers to the process of converting the 610 billion parameters, which are essentially numerical values, into different bit levels like 32-bit or 16-bit. By increasing the number of bit levels, we can represent these numbers in a more detailed and granular manner. If you search for quantization on Google right now, let's take a look at this tutorial point. Originally, if we want to represent an analog signal, does it have levels? When we talk about this vertical axis step, if it's 0.01, it can go down to 0.0001 and further. This allows us to distinguish each step. Since our memory is digitized, it needs to be quantized to differentiate these levels. This process is called quantization. But if you use 4 bits, you can distinguish the lowest value as 000 and the highest as 1001. This is quantization. This is 4-bit quantization. If we reduce it further to 2-bit, we are left with only 4 levels. 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1, making the data representation much more approximate and less accurate. Instead, it can reduce the size further, so a smaller model is possible. So what happens here is that some parts of the model are quantized to 4 bits, while other parts are left at 1.5 bits. If you were to quantize everything to a very low level, the model would break. Therefore, dynamic quantization is employed, adjusting the bit levels for different parts of the model accordingly. Various attempts were made, starting from as low as 1.58 bits. With an average of 2.51 bits, the required disk space can be significantly reduced from the original 7,800 gigabytes to a range of 131 gigabytes to 212 gigabytes. This means AI engineers no longer need to connect multiple Mac minis. It has now become possible to run these AI models on a single high-performance MacBook which means that on-device AI could rapidly spread across various applications. When we tested the performance, the original version of DeepSeek demonstrated impressive results, and even when it was quantized to 1.58 bits, it showed that it can still perform quite well. So, this Flappy Bird game was designed to move back and forth to avoid obstacles. They didn't perform precise numerical tests, but instead generated the game. It remains to be seen if it can be exactly equated. Nonetheless, they managed to compress it to this extent. They believe this level of reduction is practical. The crucial aspect here is dynamic quantization. In essence, the focus should be on maintaining the model's performance while reducing its size, rather than making indiscriminate cuts. This is the approach that DeepSeek embraces. In deep learning, we don't just randomly hit data. We use a precise data set of 800,000 entries for pre-training. I'll discuss this more in the next video. This data set is essential. To fine-tune with it, 
we need to generate these 800,000 entries effectively. Using a frontier model is crucial. It's not done randomly. The paper states that it is not just about reducing the size. High performance is achieved by generating data from a well-constructed AI model, which I will cover separately. Meanwhile, when we examined the DeepSeq R1 architecture, we discovered some fascinating insights. By analyzing the V3 model based on the R1 architecture, we observed specific levels of the model. You can see that the layers were not all mix of experts. In fact, upon closer inspection, it was revealed. This kind of information becomes evident when it's made public. Typically, this isn't disclosed openly. Interestingly, they observed that initially, it was constructed in a very dense manner. Therefore, the first three dense layers were left at 4-bit or 6-bit, and MOA. They implemented 6-bit quantization for specific layers, applying it meticulously and precisely on an individual basis. Moreover, they utilized 1.5 8-bit quantization, which has been proven to drastically reduce the model size. Given that this is a mixture of experts, MOE, model, this method ensures the model is finely tuned for optimal performance. They explain that the more intricate elements are preserved at a higher level, they suggest using a 24 gigabyte CPU or an 80 gigabyte GPU for better efficiency. Although running it solely on a CPU might be somewhat slower, it is still feasible. However, utilizing a GPU, particularly an 80 gigabyte one, significantly enhances speed, facilitating on-device AI functionality. So now, there probably won't be many people who actually use this in practice, right? Among those watching this video, most regular users will just use DeepSeek, and some might find the concept of quantization difficult to grasp. However, that's not the main point here, because it's an open source model. This means that engineers can analyze and fine tune it to create something new. The model was created just recently, less than a week ago. When the open source community starts to advance, it could potentially outpace traditional big tech companies by leveraging the collective expertise of AI engineers worldwide, rather than relying solely on their internal enhancements and proprietary releases. In the early stages, Google's Android experienced a swift rise in usage. Similarly, during the peak of Windows popularity, Linux quickly became the preferred choice for servers due to its open source nature, allowing anyone to use and improve it. This led to Linux dominating certain areas where Windows servers were less commonly used. To summarize briefly, DeepSeek R1. Recently, with China unveiling innovations such as Kimi, the competitive landscape is becoming fiercer. It's important to keep an eye on how the rivalry between the open source community and the established big tech giants will unfold. This has been Error. Happy New Year.